Hey everyone, it's your girl Brooke, and I am here on behalf of the Coco and Lemon or CocoandLemon.com, and we are interviewing our artist Vanessa. Can you actually introduce yourself to the people? Please? Yes. Hey everybody, it's Art by Ayala on Instagram, but my name is Vanessa Ayala. I'm so happy to be here with you. I am so happy to be here with you because. <laughs> You know, as we had this conversation before we even started recording, that you are such an amazing talent. You are gifted. Um, and I just want to just go right and just jump in. Do you think that this is beyond a gift for you? Is it something that um, actually, how, what is the process of your creativity when you create your art? Um, well, I, I like to reference from photos. Okay. First off, so I'll, I'll like do my own digging when it comes to my own stuff. I'll find like a photo that I really like because I like to work from reference. I'd like to, you know, do more abstract stuff, but I love to reference from a photo. And I'm not like I, I was, I studied like realism kind of stuff, but I like to play with colors and make it more abstract. So that's where I, that's where I go from there. Like this, all, everything that I have on page, it comes from a photo. And I like that. But I, I like photo realism but I feel like if you really want it to be if you really want it to look real you might as well just take a picture or keep the picture you know what I mean but if you want it to be artistic then you know have a different kind of style that's okay. that's what I like okay and we kind of jumped ahead I guess because I was so excited about the mm -hmm. art mm -hmm. I kind of know your backstory but not everyone does mm -hmm. where did this all originate from where did art by Ayala start and <sighs> how did it come about well I guess I guess you could say that it started from when I was in art school, I went to an art high school. I actually mm -hmm. grew up in Kansas City, Missouri. Kansas, yeah. Dorothy. No. <laughs> well, it's funny because Kansas City is like right in the middle of two cities. It's, oh, sorry, it's right in the middle of two states. So it's Kansas and it's Missouri. So there's okay. a Kansas City, oh, oh, a greater Kansas City area. So it's Kansas City, Kansas, Kansas City, Missouri. Okay. And I grew up on the Missouri side. So we oh. used to always joke and say like, Missouri's better than Kansas. You know, okay. <laughs> You know, nobody knows about this, but people who live out there. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I grew up in Kansas City. I went to an, a performing arts high school, which was amazing. I actually went to like a regular wow. school and as a freshman, but I didn't do well. Like I wasn't a good student. I, I was horrible. And I think it was because I didn't have that creative outlet. Mm -hmm. And I actually almost, I almost like didn't want to go to school. But then my sister was like, no, you have to, obviously you have to go to school. What do you want to do? And I was like, I had no idea. All I know is that I like, you know, creating. And so... She she actually helped me get into like a that that performing arts school and wow and from there like I just excelled like I just did such an amazing job in high school like my teachers they helped me you know grow with skill and you know taught me different techniques and I mean really it was that school was everything and and it was because of that school that I had a, a teacher of mine her name was Rusty Newton she actually applied she pretty much applied for art school for me. Because I mean, I, I'm first generation Latina. My family, wow. my family's from yeah. South America. Mm -hmm. They're from Colombia, and I, we only had one other sister that went to school and to who went to college. And so, you know, I didn't know how to apply. We didn't really know how that worked, you know, okay. or scholarships, or whatever. So, wow. I ended up getting a scholarship to an arts college in San Francisco, right after high school. But I wouldn't. I didn't really do it myself. Like she pretty much did it for me, which yeah. was amazing because I had no idea what was gonna happen. Wow. And so since I got a scholarship, you know, I was like, I gotta go. Like there's no mm -hmm. way that I could turn that down. So then I went to an art college in in San Francisco. It was called California College of the Arts, and I just, you know, I went from there. And and I I had graduated, and I was telling you earlier that yeah. when I graduated, I actually got discouraged and I quit painting for a long time. Because I just felt like there was so much pressure to, you know, to have art be a certain kind of way or it's not considered fine art if it's this kind of style or pop culture. Like, I'm really into, like, pop culture and pop art, but mm -hmm. sometimes that's looked down upon in, like, the fine art mm -hmm. world. And it's a, a very interesting, like, um, like uh, dynamic when it comes to artists mm -hmm. and, like, self-taught artists and fine art artists and a lot of that's just the BS. technique and just the mastery of the art craft i'm, I'm mm -hmm. guessing the history it's almost like a uh history major it's like or mm -hmm. someone who's into art archaeology it's like the amount of time you spend in the field mm -hmm. they respect that more than just something that's mm -hmm. creative or that's something that's more modern mm -hmm. or fitting for the times and i mm -hmm. think that Social media is breaking that in the art world as well. Mm -hmm. I think people have to adjust to understand that there's a place for your art as well as there's a place for that type of 
skill and I'm glad that you found that for yeah, yourself. Yeah, well, it happened through Instagram. Like since, you know, I I had had my Instagram page that but I always wanted to create like an art page mm -hmm. and I decided to finally make one and finally from Instagram like I've had so much support, like yeah. unbelievable support that I ever thought. I Tell never me. thought. <laughs> I literally I found you guys. in the search engine one night, and I'm not even kidding you. Do you remember which one it was? Which painting it was? It, no, I don't. But I remember seeing the pops of color, which is uh -huh. funny that you say that, that, you know, this technique that you use would be frowned upon in the art world. It literally drew, drew my attention to your work. And it made it so different. And I remember looking up um, on like, like artwork, and I just wanted just I don't know why I was looking at it, but I was at mm. two o'clock in the morning on Instagram. <laughs> Those Instagram. are artist hours, I always say. <laughs> artist hours, like the two a.m. time. And I remember coming across like just seeing a picture, and I was like, "What is that?" And it was Aaliyah. Mm. Maybe it was Aaliyah mm. painting. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was Aaliyah. I was like, "What is that? Mm. Who's doing this?" And then I found out you were a woman. I was like, "Oh wait, yeah, no, I gotta follow that's her." That's another thing too is having a female in the art world. It's like very male dominated, which yeah. is crazy. In music too, you know, everything is very male dominated, but it's mm -hmm. also so nice, you know, to connect with other female creative people, you know, like you guys. And I've and I have actually built a lot of my art off of that exact idea. Just female entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. all these like, you know, the the makeup artists or like you know um, the na my, the nail salon owner, uh, another person that I did a painting for, Kiana. Like these female entrepreneurs, like, and it's so nice to sort of like glorify you know their faces in this portrait, you know, that they can keep. But it's more it's more than that, you know. It's yeah. just like the standing for a being a female entrepreneur like i'm new to this too so but i'm also drawn and i'm fascinated by the idea of like building your own empire mm -hmm. and you know being an independent woman and connecting with other women like that like yeah. it just it like it makes my heart beat you know so mm -hmm. i i am so excited to be able to do that and mm -hmm. it's been nice because a lot of the women that i've painted portraits of they are their own business you know their own business owners and it's been nice mm -hmm. it's been nice and you know when i went on your page i just noted noticed the cohesiveness in all of your work there's like a, a, a brand you mm -hmm. are a brand mm -hmm. you're if I saw this on the street I'm like that's a copy like I would mm -hmm. know because I've been looking at all of your pictures and there's like a touch of you it's almost like your voice and I want to bring it back to that um, it sounds like you've had adversity mm -hmm. in your life mm -hmm. and that have caused the steps to bring you to this beautiful space where you're creating. You said that you weren't doing well in school. Mm -hmm. You were basically failing. Mm -hmm. And then because of that, your sister was like, wait a minute, we yeah. got to figure it out. Yeah. And it was that catapulted you to the next step. And then after that, you didn't know how to do anything for college. Your teacher stepped in. It sounds like when adversity hit or struggle hit, your creative process and the help that you needed came together. Yeah. So is this something, like you said, you love creating, but is there more to it? Is it your voice? Is it your purpose? Do you feel like it's your calling? I feel like now it is. Now, I, before, I wasn't really sure, but I, I felt very unhappy working at like a nine to five kind of thing. Mm -hmm. For some reason, I felt the pressure of like, you need to have a nine to five, you need to have, you know, security, blah, blah, blah. Like I was so like pushed with that idea. I don't know why and for the longest time I had like repressed anything creative, like painting or music or singing. Like I just repressed it for so long and in, and it was eating me inside. Like I literally was yeah. like so miserable and I would go to work and I actually, I've done like graphic design. I used to work mm -hmm. for like an advertising agency. It was just crazy because I, <laughs> when, when I went to art school, they they kind of forced you to study other things, right? Mm -hmm. So they kind of teach you how to paint in the computer. They, they force you to like learn graphic design. I learned like editing, I learned animation, all kinds of stuff, mm -hmm. which was stuff that I wanted to do, but after a while it was kind of like I had the feeling like that no one was gonna pay me to paint, you know, so I had to, learn how to do design mm -hmm. or I learned how to do animation so that I could work for a big company so that I could make my own way you so know instead of it being like to teach you multifaceted ways of doing what you love it suppressed what you love and made it all about I ended up a living yeah, yeah yeah I ended up doing that for a long long time but you know and it's crazy because it's like I saw a quote the other day that said something like you can only do something for so long for money or something mm -hmm. like that. You can only do something for money for so long. And like I was making a pretty good living. Like I was, you know, living in San Francisco. I was, you know, working for an advertising agency. I was doing like graphic design stuff. And it was, it was great. That's, that's somebody's mm -hmm. dream, you know. But I, I 
I was not happy because I don't I don't want to sit in front of a computer for hours. That's not my dream. Say it again, girl. Say it again. <laughs> so I couldn't do it. So then, you know, I ended up like I ended up leaving all that and I was sort of like discovering things and I ended up working all different kinds of crazy places and I was thinking like what am I doing? Like I am educated, like I, I have a degree, like what am I doing? Why am I like working in places that I'm not that I'm not like I'm over I feel like I was overqualified for, you know? Mm -hmm. And you weren't being fulfilled. No. And then finally, when I just kind of took a break from everything, I quit and I, ca I came back to it, it just came together. Mm -hmm. You know, it just, my ideas were more clear. My passion came out more because I hadn't done it in so long, you know, mm -hmm. so it just kind of exploded a little bit. It was the timing. Um, so can you talk about, since you used to live in San Francisco and to work for those huge marketing mm -hmm. agencies, now you're in New York. Now you're doing your own thing. What made you take that leap of faith and how did that happen? What was the process that you went okay, through? Okay, so what happened was that I was in a relationship when I was living in the Bay Area mm -hmm. and then we, we were both from Kansas City. Mm -hmm. And so I, I ended up being kind of like being influenced to move back, like to leave California, to move back. To Kansas. And it didn't work out. So then, you know, I, I kind of like had to start over basically mm -hmm. so i was i went back to stay with my mom which is horrible girl it was horrible. i know what you mean especially <laughs> when you've been on your own and then you got to move back to the parents oh my house. god it was horrible like i was I totally i was working it. like three jobs i was living in my mom's basement and like my mom's very religious and they're like so annoying because they want me to go to church all the time Hi, and like come home early i'm like thing, i'm yeah. grown i had to tell them like a million times like i'm grown you I can make do whatever i want to do yeah. i'm getting out of here as soon as i can so that kind of pushed me even more so I was working really hard. I was like, you know, I was working for a spa. I was working for a doctor. I was working for all kinds of, you know, I was like saving up money. In the meantime, you know, I, I was also doing like music stuff. I was like, you know, singing for like weddings and stuff. And then um, I had saved up, you know, at least like $2,000. And I and I told myself like, and I was telling everyone, you know, like I'm gonna move soon. I'm either going to New York, L.A., or Miami. Those are the three places, you know. And then I had been like talking to people and trying to find out like what's it like out there, and I wanted to go visit and, mm -hmm. and check it out. I had never been to New York before, yeah. so you know, luckily I had like um, you know some people that were in communication with me, and they were saying like, oh, you know, like you know, you could come because. Uh, I would I would post like singing videos on Instagram and and somebody had you know, checked it out and they were like oh it sounds good you know like if you're ever like in New York you know you know we could use like a backup singer for this blah 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 and, and it actually kind of happened that way like that was the wow. reason why like uh, a big reason why I was able to like okay like you know I'll try this out and then I'll get a job somewhere and whatever you know let's see what happens I have like a little bit of cushion I can get a job like that it's no problem and I literally moved to New York without knowing anyone I knew like one or two friends mm -hmm. and then you know I just started like I had like a you know a couple little gigs I just you know met as many people as I could and then um, I started you know I worked for like a doctor for a little bit too like a, as a secretary and mm -hmm. you know I found a little room on Craigslist and I just made my life here like mm -hmm. I just wanted to come here and I wasn't scared because also, like moving mm -hmm. like that but to me when I you think did. about it it's like I I don't really see it like that. I just see it as like something I had to do. Like I had to move and I I wanted to come to New York because I'd never been and I felt like this was the right place for me. It was like my gut that was telling me that I had to be here and there was nothing to fear. Like there was nothing to be scared about because I had to go. And you know what's crazy? Everyone has that because I have that feeling. Yesterday I submitted in my last day and I said this, the last day that I'll work for somebody. And today's the first day that I'm working for myself, completely for myself. And um, it was a gut feel. It was just like timing. I just knew it's something I had to do. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people get the same thing, but fear, like you said, just the voice of fear. It's like, what are you gonna do? How are you gonna live? Where are you gonna get money? What are you gonna? It's all of those voices mm -hmm. instead of that big one that's telling you this is gonna make you happy. Yeah. This is gonna set you at that place <laughs> where you never thought you can go. And that's what sets you apart. Yeah. You know because your story. There's people that could have had the same stories, but you're the one that followed it. Yeah. You're the one that said, yeah, if I'm going to live, I'm going to fail. I'd rather fail trying to be me and exactly. do me than to stay here for comfort, for exactly. everybody else's perception of what success is. I want to see what success is for me mm -hmm. on my own. And I'm glad that you took that leap of faith and that you started singing. And I'm actually happy to hear about that. So you're more than just a painter. 
you're an artist in every type of way. Do you like write music, produce music? What do you do? I, I write. Okay. Yeah. So I write. I've had the opportunity to to kind of like co-produce like wow. the songs that I've written, but I I find a lot of beauty in like the the poetry of, of lyrics mm -hmm. and melodies, and I appreciate you know song structure and you know I'd like to. I, I balance it a lot. Like, I'll be painting during the day, and then I'll be working on music at night, or I'll work on music, you know, during the day, and I'll work painting at night. I just feel like I, I, I always need to be doing something, like if creative or not. Yeah. And I, I don't. I would like to. I consider myself an artist, so I wanna, I wanna be able to create in all different kinds of ways. Like, I don't wanna just create in those kinds of ways. You know, I would love to pursue other things. I would love to, you know, get into dance more, maybe, mm -hmm. or like. Um, even like filmmaking stuff like that like I just feel like I'm a creative person and mm -hmm. if there's something that's kind of artsy I want to get into it one way or the other I have the re hopefully you know God permits I have the rest of my life to explore things so I would love to right now I you know I don't think that'll ever leave me art and music those things will probably stay with me forever but I would you know love to branch out even with fashion like yeah. I'm crazy about fashion. I could fashion. totally see you doing even producing designs like mm -hmm. even handbags. I would love to get into that actually yeah. I'm kind of getting into that now like um, with with the, my label Too Strong Music like we've kind of put together like this little line of like um, logos with our hats and, and wow. like shirts and stuff so we, I I want to get into that more because obviously fashion is a whole nother world but it's like amazing everything that you're doing right now this is this is not even the beginning this is just like a little whoop like of where you're gonna go Thank and you. I can't wait and I'm sure all of your supporters who've been following you who've been up to date with your artwork because I see it in different homes. Isn't that mm -hmm. so surreal? Mm -hmm. To see your painting in someone's living room yeah. and they're posting it on social media. Yeah. I see it every day. I'm like, wow. And it inspires me. Love you. You're so humble. <laughs> You're so I, humble. Thank you. Oh my gosh. I, I just feel like this, I compare, I, I have that thing where like you compare, you know, and it's like I'm like nothing compared to like other, you know, artists that I think are amazing. The last thing I want you to say to the person that you were in high school. What would you say to her now? <laughs> Dang, that's crazy. Yeah, what would you say to her now? And what would you say to your future self? Oh, that's geez. 10 that years from now. a really good question. Yeah. Dang. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, was, okay, well, let's see. 15 year old me in high yeah. school, I would mm -hmm. say. I would say that um, don't be afraid to dream big. That anything is possible. Literally anything is possible. And keep practicing. Wow, I love that. And for your future self. And for my future self, let's see, for my future self, I would say that I'm doing everything that I can right now to try to do something good for you. I am working really hard to figure out whatever it is that is, but I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing and hopefully maybe you will see the fruits of my labor. <laughs> wow, I love it. I just want to say thank you on behalf of Coco oh, and Lemon. Oh, thank you. That was amazing. And you I just, have like such good insight on on just I don't know, like life and just I I feel I feel inspired now. You know, just like an out on a better outlook of you know just working, keep working.